this week's episode of the Modern Dealer Podcast, David and I ask the question, have we passed the point of no return in regards to digital retailing? We look at three new vehicles for 2021. We do a quick Baby Shark sing-along, and we check out Bert's three tips. All that and more on this week's episode of the Modern Dealer Podcast. <laughs> Welcome in to episode 051 of the Modern Dealer Podcast. My name is David Farmer with Intice. And with me in the studio is David Bertoncini. How you doing, David? Good, sir. Yourself. My watch got stuck to the uh, stainless <laughs> yeah, steel little, desk little that we have here, more, which uh, is the beginning there. Yeah, man. It was a little bit of a, a little bit of a blooper, but it's all good. We're here. We're ready to deliver some uh, amazing content here yep. in the episode zero five one for episode zero five one. Right. We're gonna make it fun. Zero five one. Let's have a lot of fun. Yep. <laughs> Good stuff. So our main topic today is going to be digital retailing, of course, uh, which is our favorite topic here. Have we passed the point of no return? So we're really looking at the lasting changes to automotive retail um, that have been accelerated by COVID-19. Uh, but before we get into that, we got a few things we need to cover. So the first thing I want to get to cover is what are we drinking today there, sir? Uh, I went nitro because I want to bring all the horsepower today. It Aye. is. Uh, it's actually a cool cooler day here in florida it was uh, in the 70s this morning you know i thought it was a little cooler this morning. yeah you put the jacket on today <laughs> yeah i got the jacket well, i like to keep the ac you know nice and cool here in the office but uh you know i went for my bike ride this morning we've been talking about that a little bit did my eight miles this morning and uh, it was a little bit chillier this morning than yeah. it has been. It was nice. It was nice. Definitely a little bit of cool off, but still, uh, you can't have hot coffee here. And uh, at least for me this time of year, I'm, <laughs> I'm out. I don't feel like, uh, you know, scorching my tongue and then scorching my, myself as I walk across the concrete with my hot coffee. But now Kawa had always, always delivering some powerful stuff there. And uh, I do recommend if you never ever had some nitro. Try some nitro, man. That'll get you jacked up and ready for ready for a little. Yeah, I feel like I, I actually feel the caffeine today. Oh yeah, uh, more so. I think maybe maybe I've had a little extra getting ready uh, today. Cup number ten uh, already. Yeah, probably something like that. that you know, I can kind of feel it a little, a little a little jittery, a little caffeine. It actually is a little bit later in the day than we usually record at three thirty uh, today on Tuesday, uh, June sixteenth. Speaking of June sixteenth, let's talk a little bit about some of the um, current events. Uh, that's going on. Um, so, uh, so right now, I know something that we haven't talked about uh, is the coronavirus. We kind of stayed away from that the last few weeks. Uh, we're still practicing our social distancing. Um, that's still a thing, uh, unfortunately. Um, we're actually seeing in the state of Florida uh, uh, some spikes the last three, four days. Yep. I think today uh, it was 2,700 cases. Yes, in one day. We, we know we've had more testing, uh, but we've had more cases, uh, 2,700 in one day. The biggest uh, one day uh, 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 test or biggest one day cases uh, case increases uh, in one day so uh, it de definitely is still uh, interesting and it's still having an effect on business I do believe people have just dropped their guard and be like okay it's over yeah. it's like like you know something had happened and it's oh it's okay to safe to go back outside like mm -hmm. it's like a more typical like, like, florida like, 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 like a hurricane yeah exactly. it's like okay the hurricane's Phew, over, it's it's, over. <laughs> let me go outside and everything's cool but no yeah. i'll give you an example that you know i live downtown st pete so there's mm -hmm. uh some favorite restaurants that are a little indoor outdoor there's one place called parks and rec which uh they do a great job they have a lot of like outdoor like fun stuff to do yeah. but the problem is when i drove past them like a week ago i was like whoa there's way too too many people yeah. to be at that place and guess what happened employee came down with corona the yeah. whole place is shut down and the restaurant next door which is the avenue and another restaurant one block away called the galley three restaurants and a bar shut down immediately uh with uh with no opening in sight for yeah. them because of an employee came down with it and obviously that employee was serving beers to folks so mm -hmm. that'll learn them yeah. you just still gotta still gotta respect it man i mean you do. you've I mean, got it still is a virus it's still a thing you know it, it, i think that you know, it, unfortunately, it's kind of fallen between political lines uh, uh, of which side you're on based on what your political feelings are. So I, I mean, I try to be we try to be as uh, politically agnostic as possible on the Modern Leader <laughs> podcast. We know that we have people that watch this that are on both sides, whether you're, hey, you're on the left or on the right. Um, but when it comes to the coronavirus, it doesn't really matter which side you're on. It's going to have an effect 
even if it doesn't affect us personally mm-hmm. from getting sick or having a family member that's that, that that's getting sick and what that means it's having an effect on business since this is the modern dealer podcast we're talking about how people are dealing with you know uh, selling cars uh, in the modern age. And that's one of the things that we have to deal with is uh, coronavirus. And that actually kind of goes into, you know, the main topic, uh, which is how has COVID-19 accelerated um, some changes that we have to deal with in automotive? Uh, and but, but before we get to that, there's a couple of things I want to, wanted to get to. Um, yeah, so last week, I think I mentioned that... Um, uh, the New York car show for 2020 was canceled. Um, we're not going to have one this year, but that doesn't mean that we're not getting new cars, right? We're yeah, not getting you still products. got 2021 products coming out. Got so. some really cool product updates coming out right now. And I know you, you, we talked about this like six or eight months ago on the podcast, is that um, before your Forerunner, you had a IS, right? And your Five wife wanted them. to go back. You've had five of them. Five of them. So you yeah. got to be you got to be pretty excited uh, about the yeah. 2021. That's I'm just pretty gonna, sharp. I'm just gonna try to shut down her internet access. Yeah. So, <laughs> so she doesn't see it. Something, yeah. man. I gotta yeah. like block it. Like put a parental guide on it. <laughs> yeah. I bet. I mean, it's super sharp looking. I mean, yeah. It's very. It's... I mean, it definitely modernized uh, the front grill. Um, they've had that kind of hour shape uh, grill for for a long, long time now. Yeah. Uh, but this definitely makes it sportier. It, to me, it definitely brings in um, some of the Corolla aesthetics from the front, which I think is very cool looking, the Corolla yeah, this year. Yeah, the 2020 Corolla is pretty yeah. strong. It's, uh, you know, it, it is a rear-wheel drive Corolla is basically what this car mm-hmm. is, the IS. I mean, it's, it's a subcompact vehicle, but, man, that thing is... The styling, and as as far as that's Lexus actually volume vehicle is the yeah, IS. I mean, I they, they lease out dirt cheap. Yeah, uh, I know they were like two ninety nine a month for like wow. a thirty six month lease. I think it was like ten thousand miles a year or something goofy yeah, like I'm that. Yeah, sure, probably you know a few, yeah. a few, a few grand down. But gosh, I mean, you put two or three thousand dollars down, you're you're two three hundred bucks a month uh, on a car like this. Forty thousand I mean, dollar car. Pretty I mean, awesome. Yeah, yeah, they got they still have pretty strong residuals. So, mm-hmm. from the last time I looked at them on the leasing side of it, yeah, or I know the, that's what we're leasing right now. Uh, my wife drives a that's uh, a twenty Highlander twenty no twenty uh, twenty. I think it's a 19. Oh, um, uh, NX. Uh, NX. Yeah, yeah, yeah. NX 3, 300? 200, 300, one of the two. 300. It's 300, a newer, yeah. It's a newer, newer one. The newer, gotcha. The newer well, it's, moniker. It, but yeah, we love it. I mean, it's very nice. It's very good. Don't know what we're going to get next time. This is, uh, I guess that it's going to be three years old this coming January. Okay. So, we, so and we did a three year lease on it. So we're going to have to make a decision pretty quick here. Any um, Lexus dealers out there listening, you might want to get a yeah. hold of Mr. David yeah. Farmer for a little pull ahead program. <laughs> well, quick. Yeah. Really what we're looking for is a new FJ cruiser, but they don't make them. Get you know, we, the we FJ three out of, of here. Those, uh, <laughs> and we can't get another one. So we, we really need to decide maybe looking at the new, uh, Land Rover, just, or, um, uh, not discovery Land Rover defender. Have you defender. seen defender? Sharp I, looking. I saw, you know, it's funny. I saw an old one the other day, and it just, it, I, I like. Oh, the old ones yeah, are awesome. Yeah, the old, like, Jeep style. Yeah. Just, and there's yeah. a guy going down the street with his Doberman Pinscher, and he just, you know, all open. And I was like, oh, that looks cool, man. They're Doors are off. And I'm like, cool. oh, that's pretty badass. Yeah, but, but, but pretty they don't badass. drive like a Lexus. Eh. <laughs> that, that, that's the trade That is right? true. That yeah. is true. I mean, I mean you're going to go like choppy. like an old Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> That's riding rougher than yeah. rough. <laughs> so in addition to the 2021 um, uh, staying in the Toyota line, um, have you heard about the new Yaris GR? Is that for great? <laughs> <laughs> it's for... Uh, it's, go Riley or Rally or something like yeah, that? Go, it's a Go Rally? No, 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 no. It's um, Grand it, Rally? It is that... Uh, uh, here, hold, Sport. Hold on, hold on. You... Uh, T- t- tell us about what you're seeing there right now. I'm seeing a three-cylinder turbo, uh, three 260. Three-cylinder turbo, turbo, isn't that crazy? Yeah, so that's like a motorcycle. Then yeah. basically they have uh, they threw a turbo on it because uh, I think they did something crazy like that with a smart car once. Uh, who was that? I was listening to a story. Oh, it was Elon Musk when he was talking about when they were trying to launch Tesla. And they bought a smart car. And then they, they put this, uh, you know, a... Uh, electric motor in it yeah, yeah, yeah. that's just kind of reminds yeah, me yeah, of this yaris here he was doing wheelies yeah i was doing wheelies there's so much torque there so you got a 268 horsepower what 2200 pound car yeah i mean how heavy is a two-door yaris i mean 2800 pounds maybe 
Uh, I don't even think so. I think it was even yeah, less it's like probably that. twenty two hundred pound car. Yeah. Just guessing off the top of my head, looking at the the amount of sheet metal there. So the new Supra is a GR Supra. GR is I'm probably saying it wrong, but Gazoo Racing. G A Z O O Gazoo Racing. That is what that that's the GR. Uh, so this one. Uh, unfortunately, it's not going to come to the U.S. anytime soon, but it is a turbo uh, three-cylinder that's putting out 268 horsepower. Can you imagine 268 horsepower in that little thing? You will yeah. be killed yeah. pretty fast. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I mean, I think it's, it's like super- a motorcycle, basically. Just figure out a motorcycle with doors. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. It's super cool looking. Super cool looking. So that's, that's the GR uh, Supra. I'm sorry, the GR uh, Yaris. Yaris. Uh, there's a couple different uh, levels, trim levels, uh, that they're coming out with that, but not in the U.S. Uh, moving on, a couple other uh, product updates real quick. Ford Mustang Mach 1. Uh, first Mustang to have that moniker uh, since 2004. It's going to be out next spring in limited, uh, it's going to be a limited edition. Uh, but that's going to have 480 horsepower with a six, six speed, speed manual, manual transmission. Now that's my style there. Oh, yeah. Uh, six speed manual Mach 1. Looks cool. Has a lot of the style. The, uh, Stylings from the the first Mach One, which is a 1969, uh-huh. 1969 uh, Ford Mustang, very cool. And then uh, we talked about the FJ Cruiser, uh, FJ Cruiser, kind of a Ford version of that is that uh, Ford Bronco. OJ, be happy, right? I guess it's coming out <laughs> the on Bronco's his birthday back. too. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, that's oh, funny. I man. saw that. That's uh, <laughs> those Broncos are cool, man. It, yeah, you know the old cool. the that I think OJ. No, that was a Bronco too. Is a little one. He had he had the full size Bronco. Yeah, full size Bronco. So this is a full size Bronco. The old Bronco too. I I I was fighting with somebody one time to try to buy one in the nineties when I was in the military, and uh, man, I was like, man, I really want a Bronco. Or then a Bronco too. I was trying so to was, buy it to the dealer. Yeah. I got turned down. I, yeah, I was. Womp, womp, womp. <laughs> uh, I was working at a Ford store back in the eighties. Uh, uh, I guess that would have been 86, 87. Uh-huh. Uh, Bronco, uh, full-size Bronco, Bronco 2. Um, so, I mean, I was just super young then. But um, this picture, I think, that we're looking at, uh, the car and driver picture, I think that's just uh, a, a an imagination up. of what yeah. it's supposed to look like. I don't think they've released any uh, actual figures. But they say that uh, it is going to debut July 9th. So right. we're, we're only a few weeks away. Uh, that was something that was just released the other day. Um I guess there is going to be uh, two different versions. There's going to be the Ford Bronco and then a Ford Bronco Sport. I don't know uh-huh. if it's two different sizes or if it's like a four door and a two door. Uh, I don't know, um, but a lot of uh, a lot of excitement about that Ford Bronco. I think the, the Sport's the old. I'm looking at it right now. The uh, the convertible, no doors, no. Uh, yeah, they did you say know, Jeep it, style. Yeah, I did. I did read that it is going to have a re- removable doors and a removable roof, and that they really are targeting uh, the Jeep Wrangler. Sweet. Yeah. So very cool. Good for Ford, man. Yeah. I got some good. Uh, good stuff coming. Some cool stuff coming. All right. So uh, rolling uh, into our main topic here, digital retailing. Have we passed the point of no return? Uh, and really, what I, what I, what I thought about that is. We know that digital retailing has been a thing for some years now where uh, dealerships and OEMs are providing more uh, interactivity, um, allowing a customer to do more of their purchase process online. We've seen the advent of uh, Carvana, Vroom, VP, even though that they've gone out of business, but some online retailers. So I think that really is the definition of digital retailing or how, what we think about digital retailing, allowing a customer to do part of, if not all, of their purchase experience uh, online. Uh, and uh, with COVID-19 and the pandemic, where state governments have shut down dealerships from doing business the traditional way, um, have really forced the hands of many retailers to adapt or adopt a digital retailing strategy to be able to move product, right? To be able to sell cars, uh, be able to service customers in, in um, 
in uh, in new and different ways. Um, and I think that even though this is something that we've been talking about for the last few years with digital retailing, uh, the pandemic really accelerated um, a lot of change. Actually, one of the stats that I looked at is uh, Cox Automotive. Um, they had about a thousand dealers uh, that were um, uh, utilizing their advanced uh, digital technologies for uh, you know retail activities, uh, and they said that that accelerated up to about ten thousand uh, over a short period of time. So a lot more dealers that have been thinking about it, um, and some dealers that haven't been thinking about it, but right. kind of forced into it, you know, have kind of moved into. And we experienced the same thing too, where we had uh, with our digital retailing technology, uh, where we kind of had a spike. Uh, of dealers uh, looking at uh, our system and uh, adopting our system and, and uh, being able to work with some new dealers. So we're super excited about that. Um, but really what I wanted to talk about today is that um, is this a lasting change? Is this something that has, you know, have we kind of shut the door on only being a bricks and mortar type of retailing experience and moved in more into this omni channel is it but or or is it is it going to just kind of subside as we kind of move through the pandemic but you know at some point in the future we are going to have uh you know antiviral medication that's going to you know this is going right. to go away at some point in the future whether it's this year or next year or the year after so what does it look like on the other side of that? Are we going to go back to business as normal or have we made a shift that we're never going back to? I think we're probably are going to have a, well, I'll tell you now from, you know, let's look outside of the automotive industry. Let's look at uh, doctor's visits. Yeah. And prior to COVID-19, the virtual visits were less than like a hundred uh, a day to that Microsoft platform. Now they said they're at like over 5,000 visits a day for virtual visits. Let's look at uh, Instacart. Instacart was worth, uh, I think it was just shy of a billion dollars uh, prior to COVID-19. Now they're at $16 billion. Uh, they wow, went to really? in a matter of, oh, oh God, they went through the roof. You know, I, I went on a subscription for Instacart. I was just, you know, pay by the by the order. I was like, you know what? Let me just go 14 bucks a month. I'm in for the subscription. I mean, it pays for itself for 28 bucks. Well, I don't even know how much it is, but right. I went subscription on it because you got to think when we started developing these new conveniences, this is a convenience for a consumer is being able to do as much as they can before going to a dealership. Because you ask any consumer, would you rather go to the dentist or the car dealer? I'll take the dentist, right. which I mean, you're going to, that's dumb, but that's just their <laughs> perception, right? you know, but it's a convenience that we have now exposed the consumer to. They're like, okay, I can do a lot of this now online. Now that I know that I can do most of my shopping online, it, it, I, I realize like how much am I worth an hour? Take that to that hour that I spent at the grocery store, driving there, driving back, un, you know, doing all that, standing in line, blah, 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 blah. Right. You add it up and like, if you're worth 500 bucks an hour, I mean, that costs you 500 bucks a week mm -hmm. to go to the grocery store or even maybe even more than that. Who, who knows? And you're like, well, I'd rather pay somebody 20, 25 bucks to go fetch the groceries for me. And I, you know, you just got to think how not just the automotive industry, but to the consumer, we got to put ourselves in a consumer's shoes and realize the world has changed and this should be an option for every consumer that they could complete most of their transaction yep. or all of their transaction from their phones sitting on the toilet. Yeah. And you know, I think that there is a, I think there's a certain part of that where I think there's a certain percentage of the population that doesn't need to test drive a vehicle that doesn't need to be physically engaged with the overall purchase of the uh, uh, of the vehicle and i kind of think about you know you know maybe customers that uh that drive for business or they drive a lot for work and they really just buy a vehicle kind of specifically just for that maybe they lease every three years and it's like okay i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna lease another you know whatever i mean i'm, I'm gonna lease another camry i don't really need to look at that or i'm gonna lease another accord because i like accords right uh, i know what the accord is i, I know it's gonna feel like i know it's gonna feel like i can look online and i can see the new features and stuff um so I think there's going to be a, a certain 
a part of the population that's going to engage that way and and maybe they're okay with uh with um buying vehicles that way but i think also that there's a whole a larger part of the population that once we're over this pandemic and we're not worried about going out or socially distancing and it's just like business you know uh, you know life as normal going to a car dealership and buying a new vehicle it is a it's an adventure it is entertainment it right. is something that people look forward to uh, <laughs> you know there's there's some, there is some joy in the journey we used oh. to talk about right I'm only laughing because, you know, being a sales manager, I mean, there is some entertainment when the customer comes in and they yeah. just have these ridiculous expectations <laughs> and the salesperson is oh, like, yeah, I know. like uh, b- boss, uh, they want, uh, they want, they want, you know, 10,000 for their, you know, $500 yeah. car. And you're like, you know, I got to tell you a story. So, uh, <laughs> you know, we, 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 we love the story. So I remember early days working at um, uh, Sutherland Toyota. So this is, you know, b- back 96, 97, 98. And uh, I had a customer that came in. Um, and was just like totally serious about buying a Land Cruiser. Now we didn't sell a whole lot of Land Cruisers. I mean, there, it, back then there were six sixty weeks. grand. Um, yeah, I mean we were a, a big high volume Toyota dealership, but I mean realistically we'd send what 10, 10 a year. Yeah, I mean they're yeah, just they're just a low production weeks. vehicle, yeah. very expensive. But I had a customer that came in that was you know all very serious about you know uh, buying a Land Cruiser. And I did their whole deal. You know, it's just like, you know, Grant Cardone style, where it's like, you know, don't assume not, you know, you always assume yes. And, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. going through the whole thing, blah, blah, blah. And I mean, they, they look like, you know, real buyers and they were smart. And I, I want to say that this, this, this customer was a, uh, a nurse or oh, yeah. something like that, professional, uh, sure. uh, a professional woman. So we did the test drive and everything. We sat down, we go through the negotiation. And I, and I think it was a lease. You know, it was like, 890 950 940 a month or something like that i mean it was for that vehicle in that time sure that's a lot of goddamn money right 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 <laughs> and this and she was like oh no i i wouldn't be interested in the vehicle i mean i'm looking more like 240 250 a month i go <laughs> what are you talking about you know it's like a well, let, but, let, but me, show least, you, let me show you let me show you a tercel <laughs> <laughs> crazy anyways uh, so my point was um that uh, there's st- there still is entertainment in the ability to go out car shopping and look and feel and touch and ask questions and be involved in the process and to be able to go to these beautiful facilities. I mean, yeah. you know, you look at some of these, you know, uh, some of these newer facilities, whether it's a Toyota store, or a Honda store, or a Lexus store, or a BMW store, they're beautiful, right? Yeah. And 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 going there, uh, people enjoy that. And then, um, if I was so, homeless, I'd be living outside the store. Man. Right? I mean, that's pr- pretty nice, uh, pretty nice really facilities. Nice. I know they got some, uh, you know, food and they got snack bars yeah, and exactly. they've got, and, you, you know, know Starbucks and Pizza too, Huts to, to come back to yeah. get your get your service work done and sit there and have a cup of coffee or whatever. So a little um, better than a Jiffy Lube sitting in your car, just yeah, yeah, you know, right? like ninety five degrees out here in Florida, and you're like, I got to sit here with my engine off. You're yeah. sweating. <laughs> so. So I think there's for a certain certain part of the population, they're always going to want to have that uh, engagement. So uh, I think really this idea that pe- people are just going to buy online and have cars delivered, I think that's going to go away myself. Uh, I think it's going to be more of an omni-channel type of experience uh, where – you're, you know, you, you're in our lifetimes. We're never just going to have cars delivered to us only as an option. We're still going to have that full retail experience with salespeople. Um, you know, uh, it's it's never going to be like a vending machine type of experience where you just go. Right. I'll p- put my you know credit card in and, and buy a car. We're always going to have that because there's been so many questions about the vehicle itself uh, and so on. So, anyways. Uh, that's kind of what I uh, I had thought. In preparing for uh, this uh, podcast episode, I also wanted to kind of get an idea of what the OEM are doing as far as uh, digital retailing. And uh, I just did some quick searches 
uh, for example, Honda, Hyundai, GM, Acura. There's a few a handful that are advertising buying from home on their website. Right. But what what I found was really interesting is if you kind of followed through and you went from the OEM site, you did a, a dealer uh, a, a dealer locator, and then ultimately get to the dealership's website uh, to be able to say, "Hey, I want to buy a, a Honda online." And by the time you make it down to the you know the third party dealership website everything kind of falls apart uh, so this idea that uh, the OEM is embracing uh, digital retailing and trying to push that down uh, to uh, the dealership I think that kind of, that that whole process kind of falls apart so from a dealership a, a, a standpoint I think you really need to really start to think about um, what that experience is going to be for your business uh, and not relying upon the OEM to kind of do it for you. Um, so, you know, I put put together a, a quick digital retailing uh, checklist, um, and I'll include that in uh, the show notes for this episode. But it includes things like what we talked about last week. Are, are you going to have true transparent pricing? Is the customer going to be able to get an actual cash value from their trade-in, or are they just going to be able to get a book value? Um, are you going to be able to have real taxes and fees? Are you going to have the ability to look up and use the customer's real FICO score? Can you look? Can a customer look up their trade payoff right within that experience? Experience. Uh, can they complete a credit application and have that credit application integrate into your uh, your internal processes uh, at the dealership? Uh, can they request a test drive at home or at work? Um, can they research and select finance products that are VIN specific? Um, and then, and then, how are you going to be able to? find out if this is something that is working for your dealership. I mean, do you have, are you getting a high amount of engagement? Are you able to track that type of engagement? I mean, where can you actually see the engagement? And so from a technology standpoint, we're able to um, supply all of this for our dealers. Uh, we're able to answer, yes, we can handle all of those things. And that's what I would be looking at if I was on the dealer side right now is, is not just relying upon the digital retailing technologies that my OEM is using, but you know, really what can I do to kind of differentiate my dealership and my customer experience and incorporate that into my process as an entrepreneur and as a business owner. So anyways, uh, we kind of been all over the place. We're 27 minutes in, David. We only got a couple minutes to get this thing wrapped up, but I'm sure you got probably got a couple uh, a, a couple uh, 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 tips tips here. I'm uh, putting me out as we speak. I'm just about uh, <laughs> about there. But... Why don't you go, go ahead well, and continue to work on it, and I'll just do a little uh, I'll just do a little sing along here. So we'll just go, <laughs> baby. Oh shark, man, do, come do, on, do, dude. Do, 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 <laughs> That's so stuck in my head today. That's the last thing I heard when I was leaving the house. I was listening. My toddler was there, jamming out the baby shark. But hey, I could roll into it. I'm Here there. I'm done. Three, three tips. tips. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. So you know, I was looking at these manufacturers call to actions and one of them was uh, I don't think this really fits for a Hyundai buyer. A Hyundai buyer says click to buy. I don't really think of the avatar of a Hyundai buyer is going to actually buy right there on the spot. Maybe click to shop or get your yeah, you know get your special pricing. So you know follow up with your call to action. If you got it on your own website, don't marry your own. Do some A B testing, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You, you, See you, if you, shop you can use I got like something. I mean, uh, Google optimized to change out that call to action and do some real scientific testing. Try That's that. That's pretty strong. Jump yep. pretty strong. I would say, uh, and then second, jump into if that lead did come through, you know, as uh, maybe from the OEM or uh, from your website, uh, jump in and make it now, just make it an entire, like you said, a little more of a omni channel approach. A lot of the customer, maybe you might want to jump in as, and if you have the ability to text the customer, if they, you know, Hey, Mr. Customer, send them an email. Is it okay if we text you? And maybe we can just do a little bit of a, a little deeper dive with the customer. Assisted uh, FaceTime. Do, do the system. I Remember, like we're not product specialists. Yeah. We are process specialists yeah. with the new COVID-19 process. Hey, Mr. Customer, the new COVID-19 process. We'd like to actually do a little, uh, 
uh, FaceTime with you and yep. show you the vehicle. You can shut off FaceTime, your, your camera. FaceTime, Zoom meetings, yep. a lot of different ways. Jump on yep. your website, walk through the process, assist them, answer questions. Yep. And if you made it that far through the process, then have your F&I, tip number three, have your F&I actually jump in and get involved too because, uh, you know, I know a lot of stores had record months last month, but right now, uh, moving into summer, uh, you may want to just have uh, F&I get a little more of involvement in that process Absolutely. of your I think it's a great digital idea. delivery. So. Zoom meeting, FaceTime, you utilize technology that's available out there right now. Um, and may maybe even you, the technology that you're utilizing right now, uh, they have some upgrades that are available to be able to do some of that stuff. So I tell you, we got about 15 seconds to get this thing wrapped up. So for David. And David. That's a wrap. <laughs>